When it comes to bass fishing, the wacky rig can be a very vital technique to have in your tackle box. The wacky rig shines all year long and catches some huge fish. This technique is underutilized by many bass fishermen and can potentially catch you your next personal best. In this video, I'm going to tell you five common wacky rig mistakes that I see many anglers making all the time. Many of these common wacky rig mistakes are very easy to fix and can improve how many fish that you catch whenever you use the wacky rig the next time whenever you're out on the water. Also if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing. We're on the way to 5k by the end of the year and I would love to have you join the community. It would mean so much to me. At the time of recording this video we're at 2.63k and I just wanted to say thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to me for everyone who does support the channel and is subscribed. Let me know what you think about these five common wacky rig mistakes in the comment section down below. The first mistake I see many anglers make whenever they're fishing the wacky rig is not using the right gear. When fishing a wacky rig, the gear you use is very important, especially considering how it's a finesse technique and you need to feel those bites. So it is really important to have some good gear. I like to use a medium moderate action with a 2500 spinning reel whenever I'm fishing the wacky rig. This however comes down to personal preference and make sure you experiment to see what works best for you. You might want a medium moderate action for your wacky. I mean it really just depends on how you like to fish so keep that in mind. Also I would like to mention that some anglers do like to use a 3000 size reel whenever they're fishing the wacky rig or really any finesse technique and there are some advantages to it. The main one being you will be able to horse fish out of cover a little bit easier with a little bigger reel and you will be able to pick up more line whenever you are reeling it into your spool but in my honest opinion a 2500 is just perfect. However it really does come down to personal preference so make sure you experiment and see what works best for you. Whenever it comes down to line that you should use you have a couple of options. You can either run braid with a fluorocarbon leader or you can run straight fluorocarbon. Personally I like to run straight fluorocarbon but that's just how I am. The benefit of using straight fluorocarbon is that you don't have to tie leaders and it will sink. The benefit of using straight fluorocarbon is you do not have to constantly tie leaders whenever you break off a lot. The benefits of using braid to a fluorocarbon leader is you will not have to re-spool your spool as much because you're going to be tying on to the braid with your fluorocarbon leader so you're not going to really get into that backing at all and the braid is more sensitive so you'll be able to detect more bites and this is really handy especially if you're new to bass fishermen or even if you have been in the sport for a while it can be pretty useful. Make sure you experiment and see which one works best for you. The wacky rig is a versatile lure due to how you can change the presentation of the lure completely by changing up what worm you put on it. Choosing the right worm for your wacky rig is as important as your rod, reel, and hook and the line you pick. Depending on what worm you choose will determine how fast your wacky rig will sink through the water column. For example, the Yum Dinger is one of the slowest sinking worms that you could buy, while the Gary Yamamoto Cinco sinks so much more quickly. Depending on the mood for the bass for that day will determine which worm that you should use and how slowly you want it to fall through the water column. Some days they want a slower sinking worm, while on other days they definitely want that faster sinking one. The hook that I personally like to use whenever I fish in the wacky rig is the Gabakatsu B10S Stinger in the one aught size. Now you might think that this hook is too big for a wacky rig, but honestly I have a really good hookup ratio whenever I am using the wacky rig with the B10S stingers and I wouldn't change it for anything. And honestly it really does work well for me. Plus I hardly ever lose a fish whenever I'm using the wacky rig with those hooks. It's also not too light of a wire hook that it won't cut through those secos as much. Also whenever I set the hook it is always in the roof of the bass's mouth and I feel like that is why my hookup ratio is so high because I just get it right up there where you want it. However it really really does come down to personal preference so make sure you experiment and see what works best for you. Let me know down below what your favorite hook is to use whenever you're fishing the wacky rig. The second mistake that I see many anglers make whenever they're fishing the wacky rig is not using o-rings. Every time I'm fishing the wacky rig I make sure that I use an o-ring for a few reasons. The first reason that I like to use o-rings is I honestly do not go through as many Cinco's as I would if I wasn't using an o-ring and there's been days where I forgot 
unplug my o-ring so i've had to just hook it normally without using an o-ring and i went through so many more Senkos. so it definitely does make a difference o-rings are pretty cheap overall and depending on what Senko you're fishing those can get pretty expensive so just paying that little bit extra for those o-rings can save you so much money whenever you're fishing a Senko, especially on the wacky rig trust me if you never used an o-ring before while using the wacky rig you are really missing out on one of the best ways to save money on some Senkos. Some people like to hook the wacky rig perpendicular and not parallel with the worm, and this is one of the main reasons why they don't want to use O-rings. Now, many anglers will cross two O-rings so they can rig it perpendicular, so do keep that in mind if you want to rig it like that. And again, that really does come down to personal preference. Personally, I like to rig mine parallel with my Senko, but that's just how I like to do it. You could do it completely different and still catch bass. Let me know in the comment section down below if you like to use O-rings or not. The third mistake I see many anglers make whenever they're fishing the wacky rig is not fishing it in the right areas. The wacky rig is a very versatile rig that can be fished in many different scenarios, but really does truly shine in shallow water. In my opinion, this is one of the best lures to skip and can get where other lures cannot get to. I love skipping the wacky rig under overhanging trees and under docks. Normally, if you could skip the wacky rig in these types of areas, you will trigger a reaction strike out of the bass whenever they are sitting there. I have caught many bass doing this and some huge ones too, skipping the wacky rig where many anglers will not even try to get their lure to. If you're not good at skipping lures yet, the wacky rig is a very good way to learn and it's personally how I learned how to skip lures. It's definitely a lot easier to use a spinning rod compared to a bait caster whenever you learn how to skip for the first time and you won't get as many bird's nests. I plan on doing a video in the future talking about how to skip lures effectively and this will work well for new or even experienced anglers so if that interests you make sure you subscribe. The fourth mistake that I see many anglers making whenever they're fishing the wacky rig is not realizing how versatile and effective the wacky rig can be. The wacky rig is one of the most versatile lures because of how many different ways you can fish the wacky rig and how many different ways you can rig it. Depending on what type of structure you are fishing around will determine how exactly you should fish the wacky rig. For example, if you are fishing around timber or any thick structure, you might want to consider fishing the wacky rig with a weed guard on the hook. Whenever fishing the wacky rig, it is important to understand how many different retrievals there are and how you can utilize them in certain scenarios. Many anglers do not even realize that they're fishing the wacky rig the same way and don't fish it any other way. I am here to tell you that the wacky rig can be fished with many different retrieves and is one of the most versatile lures in bass fishing. There are two main retrieves to use whenever you are fishing the wacky rig. The first retrieve, which is the most popular, is whenever you cast the wacky rig and just let it fall throughout the water column. 90% of the time, this is the retrieval I'm using whenever I fish the wacky rig, and fishing the wacky rig like this can catch even the most pressured bass. Most of the time, whenever you're fishing with this retrieval method, the bass will hit it on the fall. The second retrieval I do is casting the wacky rig out and then letting it fall to the bottom. And then I pop my rod so it pops off the bottom. And then I do that a couple times and let it fall back down. I use this retrieval a lot, especially whenever I want to give the worm more action, depending on the situation that I'm in. This works well in many different scenarios and is a good retrieval to know. By utilizing these two retrieves, you will be able to catch some giant bass whenever you are fishing the wacky rig. The fifth mistake I see many anglers make whenever they are fishing the wacky rig is not knowing where exactly you should be fishing it. The wacky rig is a good lure to to use especially whenever the bass are pressured or if they are in shallow water. The wacky rig can be fished around many different types of structures and works well when the bass are not wanting to bite. The wacky rig is one of the most versatile lure and just straight up catches some huge bass. Many anglers will only throw the wacky rig where they think it will not get snagged at and the wacky rig is honestly such a versatile lure and can excel in many different types of situations. Personally, I like to fish the wacky rig pretty much anywhere around any type of structure as long as it's shallow. For example, whenever I was down on Lake Gunnersville with Christian throwing a wacky rig, the anglers I talked to at the ramp said that they were mainly power fishing, throwing lipless crankbaits and chatterbaits. I figured not many people would fish the wacky rig on Gunnersville just because a lot of people, whenever you think of Gunnersville, they think of lipless crankbaits or chatterbaits, something to come through the grass. Not many people think about 
actually throw on the Wacky Rig. And one of the big reasons why I chose to throw the Wacky Rig was how pressured the lake was. Whenever we were driving to the boat ramp, we passed by this one bridge and I swear there was like 30 boats just sitting on it. And this bridge was probably only like a mile or two long. And I realized how pressured the bass were here on Gunnersville compared to any lake that I fished in Western North Carolina. This started paying off for me once I realized how pressured the bass were on Gunnersville and once I started fishing the wacky rig. And I had a good day out on the water whenever I started using the wacky rig. Many anglers don't even like to throw the wacky rig because they think they will catch small bass. I am here to tell you that the wacky rig can truly catch some monster bass. Whenever I was on Gunnersville and I was using the wacky rig, all the bass that I caught were in less than a foot of water. Whenever I see shallow water, one of the first lures that pops in my head is the wacky rig just because of how well it works in shallow water and for pressure bass. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. If you do not have a wacky rig tied on whenever you're fishing shallow water, you are probably missing out on a bunch of bites that can make the difference if you place in a tournament or if you don't place at all. So do keep that in mind. These are my top five mistakes that I see many anglers make whenever they fish the wacky rig. Following these tips will greatly increase the quantity and the quality of the bass that you catch whenever you are using the wacky rig. Let me know if this video helped you in the comment section down below. Also, let me know if you've had any luck using the wacky rig before and what the largest bass that you've caught on it was. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button so more people can get recommended this video. If you are not subscribed and made it this far in the video, what are you doing? Join the community. I promise you will not regret it. If you want to check out another proven fish catcher, make sure you check out this video right here.